room and ending on Saturday just to use it as a bullpen. We just said, you know, let's let him rest and be strong on Tuesday. You have like a pitch count for him, or how many innings you like to see him go? No, not. I mean, there'll be a there'll be a number. I mean, I mean, probably could go seventy or eighty. Um, but you know, if he's throwing strikes, you know, he can go as many innings as he can. You sitting there, Carter's on the board. I mean, you, you plan to throw him? Yeah, if if at all possible, we will. Um, obviously, we want it to feel right. Maybe not put him in like a super leverage type position. More of a it would be like start an inning. And, Kind of go from there. How big a surprise is it, is it that he's ready this quickly? Well, you know, when it first happened, I thought, well, he probably won't pitch in 24. I'm getting ready for 25. But then it went really well. It looked great after the surgery and then the rehab process throughout the summer, throughout Christmas break. I mean, he's just he just really worked hard and stayed on it. And uh, I mean, his he's just accelerated everything. It's been great. I think UCA is like only seven and six, but they played a lot of close games, played LSU tight. What do you know about them? Yes, they, they played a lot of close games and they played some good people. They uh, they will fight you. And, uh, you know, they're they're coming off a weekend series just like everybody else. So it's, you know, uh, they're probably trying to figure out exactly how they're going to handle their pitching. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's always a good game when we play the in-state teams for the most part. Coach, you talked about how uh, Nolan Souza and the way that he's playing good and making your life a little bit more difficult with that decision a second. Yeah, he's not really making it more difficult. He's making it difficult for me to figure out who to play all the time. And, uh, you know, I think I'll put him in the lineup again tomorrow to start. And, uh, you know, I might move Holt over to third and give Sprague a lot of day off, let him know stuff. He has played, he has played every inning of every game. And uh, that's kind of what I'm looking to do right now. So with Bybee getting near the end of the protocol, from a return to the mound perspective, you got a, a timeline in mind? Uh, maybe maybe 10 days out, maybe next Tuesday. Okay. Not sure exactly uh, all the rules on that, but you know he's probably he's throwing on his own and doing some things. We just couldn't really do anything with him until yesterday, and uh, I, I think I think he's I don't think so this weekend, but next week sometime. And then you didn't mention Adam Hatchman. What, yeah. What's the update on him? Well, you know, he's coming off of surgery as well, and he's not ready yet. So, you know, we're not rushing that process at all. We'll just we'll just wait and see how he feels when he's ready to pitch. We'll pitch him. That's... With Carter, are you looking to maybe get an inning out of him? Do you want to extend? Yeah, there would be definitely a pitch count on him, and it's probably more of an inning. Yeah. You, you've given Wilsmeyer a couple of days off. Just is, do you think that might help him a little bit, kind of watching it from the sideline, watching from the dugout? Yeah, I think so. I mean, obviously, he's a really good defender. and. You know, we'd, we'd like him to be out there, and he will be out there. You know, I'm not sure how I'm going to go in center tomorrow. Um, you know, I could play Lovich out there. I could make a few different changes. But, um, yeah, sometimes just getting offside, relax a little bit, just calm you down. You know, that, I think that's what he needed. You've done that a few times over the years. Just how do you know when to play that card, when to let him kind of play through it? Just how, how do you go about that? Well, you're not sure. I mean, you're never 100% sure. You, then you just kind of watch and see how the bats are after the fact. And uh, usually they're better. They're not going out of the zone as much or swinging as missing as much. And maybe they've slowed the game down a little bit. So yesterday, you'd like to get Gage Wood back out there. Yeah. And what's the plan for him? Yeah, I mean, he's available tomorrow. So we have confidence in Gage. And he's got a good arm. And, you know, he just, he's just got a, he's got to finish hitters. He gets ahead of them a lot, and he's, and he's made a mistake strike mistakes and that's they, they've made him pay and that's the way the game works especially the higher level you go you know when you when you make a mistake they're usually going to square it up has Stovall gotten to the point where he can stand in against pitchers yet or yeah what, what we've done with him is he's standing in when all of our pitchers for the most part a lot of them are warming up or throwing their bullpens and we put a screen in front of him you have a projected date for when he might be able to get back in the line well just uh, I was hoping that he could get back for Oral Roberts but I don't know if he's going to be ready yet. We'll just wait and see. We just don't want to rush it. I mean, once he gets back in the lineup, he'll be in the lineup, and he'll be playing all the time every day. You mentioned some of the conversations you had with people like in your office, wanting to play. Just overall team morale, team chemistry, just do you see positive signs in that regard? Yeah, you know, and it, we kind of we, – we knew that there was going to be some guys that, you know, they're used to playing that aren't playing. You know, the way it works, you bring in, you know, a JUCO transfer or a grad transfer, or anybody that with a little bit of experience, 
they're used to playing. And then you bring in freshmen that are pretty darn good, and they get in the lineup, and they take somebody's job or whatever the case may be. You know, it, it, just as long as they can back it up, you know, they got to prove that they deserve to play over somebody. But, you know, it's been good. I think guys understand uh, that, if, you know, unless they're doing really well and somebody else is doing really well, it's sometimes it's not that difficult of a decision if you're just talking about that game. It's several years now you played the in-state teams, and you were a guy that really pushed for that because you wanted, you know, teams closer to be able to come and play. You weren't afraid of the in-state stuff. Just how, how do you feel like that's worked several years now? I think it's been good. I mean, I I, I know that if I coached at a, a, a school in this state, it wasn't the University of Arkansas that I'd want to I'd want to play Arkansas. So um, I think that I'm sure their players, you know, want to play in the ballpark, want to play in front of a bunch of fans, and they, they know the guys on our team as. Our guys know some of those guys. Played summer ball with them and stuff. I think it's a good. I think it's good. You know, it's 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 probably mentally more difficult for us than them. They, you know, a lot of cases they have nothing to lose, and if we lose, we're supposed to win. But you know, really every game we play now is kind of that way. So uh, it's 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 another game for us. We're gonna do the best we can to win. Two weeks, two couple weeks in your nine and two. Just kind of where do you feel like you guys are right now? Yeah, I think we're gonna be a lot better. And it doesn't mean we're going to win, you know, nine out of every 11 games we play. But the competition's going to just get better and better. Uh, but we can play better, and our players know that. And that's that's the thing that we look forward to doing is continue to get better and start, uh, you know, start making a move as far as, you know, every game we play, we feel like that, you know, we're going to be super hard to beat if we can get to our potential. You mentioned that he was – uh, laid back nature. You also mentioned, you know, he's pushing more than maybe a list that anybody else. How have you seen him handle the slower start to the season? I think he's handled it great. I mean, I, inside, I'm sure it's bothering him a lot, but he's not really showing it. He, you know, he's not a bat thrower or glove thrower or screamer. Uh, he just he hasn't he hasn't let it bother him in the field. You know, he's feeling the ball pretty good, and um, I, I like his demeanor. Um, he's got some fire in him too, and he's a tough kid, so. He might have the perfect makeup for this game because it can be so frustrating, but I think he's he's getting real close. You mentioned a little bit with Sprague Lott, it kind of inverting where you guys were really happy with his club in the fall and, and how his bats were really, you know, performing well and there's been a couple errors. Are you confident the glove will get back to where it needs to be? Well, now? It was, it's back to where it was. I mean, he played great all, all weekend. And, you know, I just feel like it was it just happens. It's, that's baseball, you know. he's. You can make three or four errors in a two-week period and not make an error for 45 days. You, it's a tough position third. You got to come and get balls. You got to backhand balls. You get balls hit at you super hard. Um, you know, if you look over the years, you go look at your good third baseman you have. They're always, most all of them are going to make 10, 12, 15 errors before the season's over. It's kind of when you make them. You know, you like to make them that they don't hurt you. Obviously. What's Cody Frank done to pitch the ball for you so far? Well, Cody's, you know. Cody showed us last year what we what we thought we were getting. I mean, that guy can pitch two times on the weekend or twice during the week, whatever you need him. He's just been versatile. He throws strikes. He competes. He can feel his position. And then he got hurt, came back, seemed to be better than ever. He hadn't lost anything, probably gained a little bit, actually. And uh, we just like him out there. We feel confident with him on the mound. You told me the other day that, you know, everything he's done at home, he said you guys have been real – yeah. Welcoming. Yeah. To, to, I mean, how much do you think that maybe that helps? Oh, I'm sure it helps for them. But like, you know, just the other day I came in after the game, and I think it was Saturday after the game, and his, uh, he was in there in our uh, kind of our nutrition area where our pool table and all that stuff is, and his wife was in there with him. They had the baby, you know, and some of the guys were talking to him. I went up and talked to her and, you know, kind of giving him a hard time. You know, it's just fun. I, I, I think it's a great atmosphere. I think they feel really comfortable and know that we respect everything they're doing. On the flip side of Souza playing so well lately is Peyton Holt's been on the bench the last couple of games. Being an older guy, how has he handled all that? Oh, Peyton's been great. You know, Peyton knows that he's going to be moved around a little bit. You know, let's say Stovall didn't get hurt. Was he going to be our third baseman? Is he going to DA and play in left field? Is he going to sit? Probably a little bit of all, all of that. And, uh, you know, you think about last year at this time, he was a he was way down on the depth chart, and when he got his chance, he did really well. So he's kind of a gamer, you know, one of those guys that 
you know, he's he's really proud to wear the uniform and uh, he's playing for the team. That's 100. percent With Gackle throwing a lot of late inning situations, closing games for you. When you think back to how it played out with some of your freshman closers the last couple of years, does that make you a little bit more cautious of how you use him down the stretch? Well, he's different than, than like Brady got tired because Brady had some arm issues. Brady didn't pit his freshman year in the fall. He didn't throw one time. That was like September 7th. He didn't throw again. And this is this is a different arm action. Um, Brady's actually tightened his up, shortened it up a little bit. But this is more of a, just the arm action that you don't worry about as much, shorter. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you always learn from the past. But And we won't have to use him you know, crazy because we have other guys. How has Will McIntyre been feeling after uh, his first few relief appearances? Well, you know, Will, he's he's always throwing the ball 80 miles an hour, or 89, 90, 91 miles an hour. So it's a really good cutter and he spin a breaking ball on you and he just keeps wanting the baseball. So um, will we use him tomorrow? I doubt it. Um, even if we would like to try to give him a little bit of time to get ready for the weekend. All right, Coach, that's the tap.